Hello champions and future champions, hello Chair Smooth family, welcome to today's daily lesson. Today we will continue the topic, show your cards. I mean we will not show our cards, but with show your cards we are going to ask opponent to show his cards. The last time we had a topic when it was about delaying uh, castling and today we have another interesting thing. Before we go ahead, here I offer you to pause the video, evaluate the position and find a plan for white, it's white to move. Okay, it is easy to notice that white already launched a massive attack on opponent king on g8. The queen is on g4, bishop on d3, rook on h3 and here black has weaknesses on the dark squares and also here black has a target on g6 pawn. Black's dark squares are very weak and at some point we can try to play bishop h4 trying to bring the bishop on f6 and if black plays bishop e7 we can exchange the bishops and then try to launch the attack with using the dark squares. So a white here has an attack, we just need to understand how we are going to attack and let's see what other factors are also on the board. White has strategically uh, two problems, one is their b3 pawn. It's not defended with any of the pawns and the b3 is a weak pawn and in future black can attack the b3 pawn. And another problem is that the opponent here has a connected post pawn. The good news, the bishop on d3 is doing super job. He is blocking opponent's pawn and at the same time he is working on attack. The only thing we should understand how to continue the attack. One of the moves that comes easy to our minds is to play here hg6. And if opponent takes hg6, okay, with the h line we can try to checkmate him. But the problem is that after hg6, opponent takes fg6. Rook a6 defends the e6 pawn, rook b7 defends the h7 pawn, bishop on e8 defends the g6 pawn. So all are defended and it's gonna be not easy to break opponent's position. We can also start with the bishop h4, with the idea after queen moves we put the bishop on f6. But black can play bishop e7, take, take, and again it's gonna be not easy to break opponent position, because queen e7 is defending the dark squares, there is no way we can bring somehow our queen to f6 or h6, and if any point we take hg6, black always takes fg6. Through on b7, uh, come to defense the h7 pawn. If you try here uh, to play rook h1 with the idea king g1 and now we're doubling the rook and then take hg6, now the b3 pawn hangs. Now let's come back. What we can notice here in this position? Black's rook on b7 is doing fantastic job. He's defending the king, especially the h7 pawn, and at the same time he's attacking the b3 pawn, so not letting our rook on b1 freely to move. And here the move was played in the game. Okay, before showing it, the last time I am offering you to pause the video and find it. Okay, in the game, Schmaltz Roland, player with white pieces, who is playing against Milov Leonid, played here bishop e4, very strong move, asking opponent rook on b7 to show his cards. He's going to stay on this diagonal, keeping uh, to defend the king, or to stay on b line trying to attack the b3 pawn. But before we see opponent's rook moves, uh, we need to check out what happens after bishop c6, if black offer to exchange the bishops. Because after bishop c6, rook c6, what will happen? We remove our attacker, opponent removed his defender. But the bishop on d3 was not just attacker, he was blockading opponent's uh, post pawn. So after a bishop c6, here what is happening? Black is closing their rook on a6 and the e6 pawn is not defended anymore. And here we can take a chance and take here on g6. And now black has issues. If they take the bishop, then it's coming g8, 6, double check. Black's only move is king h8 and then queen g8, check might. After bishop c6, hg6, if black plays fg6 if they was playing in the previous cases. Now the rook on a6 is not defending the a6 pawn and white can take queen e6 with a check additionally c6, bishop is hanging. And after bishop c6, hg6 if black takes your hg6, then uh, there are different ways to checkmate with the h line, easier one is bishop c6. Rook c6, black is going to play bishop g7 which is going to defend the king on g8 but bishop h4 first. Now if the queen moves, bishop f6 will be played. And if bishop e7, then take, take and rook h1. 
By the way, notice that with earlier bishop e4 move, also white defended their b3 pawn with rook on h3. And now the next move, white is going to play king g1 with rook h8 and then rook h7 with a checkmate. And black cannot really run because if king f8 any it will be rook h8 check. If they play some queen d7, they cannot run king f8, uh, king e7 because always will be queen g5 move. So the most important thing happened is that after bishop e4, bishop c6, hg6, black could not take fg6. And after bishop e4, black has a very unpleasant choice. The rook on b7 was doing great, he was defending here and he was attacking here. But now he should make a choice. If black plays here rook b8, now h7, pawn is gonna be much weaker. White can play here bishop h4, bishop e7, take, take play rook h1, the next move, king g1, and after we take hg6, fg6, we can take h7, because rook on b7 is not uh, defending anymore the h7 pawn. After bishop e4 in the game, black played rook a7, but now there is a good news, the rook on b1 is totally free. Here white could play differently, it's possible to play here bishop h4, bishop e7, take, take, and play rook h1. In the game, white didn't hurry up anywhere, they played rook d1, Using that bishop is on e4, they can play here rook d3, king g7, rook d3, black just waited, king g1, another nice move, great idea, next to play rook h2, rook h3, and then checkmate it black. So here was today's lesson. Of an opponent will have a multifunctional pieces, as in this case was the rook on b7, he was defending and attacking. And with bishop e4 move, we gave opponent a very unpleasant choice. At the end of the lesson, I am going to offer you a position to think about. Here is a white to move. What to play? We would love to play rook e7, however, the bishop is on c5. We would also love to play knight g5 with the idea to play knight e6 with check, uh, winning one of these rooks, also bishop on c5 is hanging. However, bishop is not just defending the e7, but also he is looking at our f2 pawn. What to play here? You can put the answers in the comments section. Jim Avatik was with you. See you tomorrow during the next daily lesson. And again, thanks for all your support, for subscribing, for liking and for sharing with your friends. See you tomorrow.